In this issue, the members of the team get their superhero names. Just like the prior issue, it's the media that gives each member a name. Oh, those silly labels. Rita Farr is Elasti Woman, Larry Trainer is Negative Man, and Cliff Steele is Automaton. The Chief dispatches the team to save a submarine that has crashed just off the coast of New York. Luckily, Chief had the foresight to create an oversized scuba tank and mask for Rita to use while performing this task. It has to be pointed out, because it is amusingly ridiculous, that Cliff also wears a diving mask while underwater. I mean, he's a robot. He doesn't need to do a lot of breathing. Regardless, during this rescue, a sea monster attacks, and Rita blows it up with one of the submarine's torpedoes. Afterward, Cliff is confused. He didn't see the sea monster everyone was panicking about. Right after this rescue, the chief sends the team to northern Canada to dig out a town buried by an avalanche. Again, while performing this rescue, another monster attacks. And again, Cliff can't see what everyone else is freaking out about. Cliff is convinced something is wrong with his brain. Until. On TV, a man called Dr. Janus claims these monsters are from another dimension and they are preparing to invade Earth. However, we soon learn, he's a former Nazi propaganda specialist who created a machine that makes everyone mass hallucinate. His plan is to have everyone believe in this invasion so he can save them all from it and then become king of the world. Hmm, that sounds somewhat familiar. Extra dimensional beings invading Earth. A plan to save the world from this fake invasion. Hmm, can't place where I might have heard this though. Oh well, moving on. Through the most convenient of coincidences, the team discovered that Dr. Janus is an escaped Nazi and figure out he has a device that causes hallucinations. Seriously, they draw a goatee on an old photo and instantly know what's going down. That's both absurd and pure genius. The team also figure out that Cliff's steel enshrouded brain prevents him from the effects of this device. Cliff's brain isn't defective, it's actually working perfectly. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Janus is captured. What's kind of interesting about this issue is Cliff experiences an extended episode of something we call the Mandela Effect nowadays. He knows that something on the news didn't happen, but everyone else believes otherwise. A cool but negative character trait comes out of this too. With only a brain left as evidence of his prior humanity, Cliff is convinced that his final human element will eventually fail and break down. It's all he has left to lose. That's sad and tragic, but a good character touch. Hello and welcome to the rambling at the end. I thought I should take a moment and mention a few things I forgot in the first video. At this point, the Doom Patrol is the main feature in My Greatest Adventure, but there were other short stories included. It's going to be a few more issues before the entire issue is devoted to them. So that's why a few of these videos are really short. Also, reading through the comments, one person pointed out there were no credits. So with this video, I added the writing and art credit to the title at the beginning. The entire series is done by the creative team of writer Arnold Drake and the artist Bruno Premiani, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. The artist, Bob Brown, would take over doing covers in a few issues. I'm not entirely sure how rare it is that one creative team is responsible for an entire run. It seems to me, especially at DC in the 60s, that an artist or writer usually stayed on a title for a significant amount of time. Because, you know, getting a long-term paying gig was better than having to hustle up jobs every month. Alright, that's it for now. I'm likely going to do a few more of these before I decide whether to continue to the end. That way you all get a good taste of what this series is going to be like. They're short, to the point, and hopefully, kind of fun.